Well, those are the latest updates from the Afia House uh, CES. Dr. Rashid Aman bringing us uh, up to speed with the latest number of which so far 1,139 samples have been tested in the last 24 hours where 25 people have tested uh, positive for the COVID-19, that is coronavirus, uh, 23 are male and two are females, and the youngest of them is 22 years, and the oldest is 50 years. So far, the country has t tested 444,000, uh, 44, sorry, and, f and f 851 samples. Now, the 23 are Kenyans, and the two are Somali. Uh, just before the breakdown of the information or the numbers that uh, the CES has presented, or released, he has said the measures that have been put in place that include the cessation and the curfew are not to punish anyone, but it's just a way of uh, to help to break the spread of coronavirus and flatten the curve and he has also encouraged the members of the public to visit the uh, medical facilities of their choice uh, it has been noted members of the public nowadays or lately are not visiting the uh, um, medical facilities for health checkups and it's a worrying issue since we have conditions in our lives and these are some of the things that need to be looked into now uh Kajado had had uh, three, uh, six cases of which all of them are drivers, uh, truck drivers for that matter. Mombasa had five, and uh, these were distributed in Likoni and Nyali. Uh, Nairobi had three cases from Gidurai and Sare. Kwale had three or has three, and both uh, all of them are drivers uh, from Lunga Lunga. Taita Taveta has two steel drivers from Voi. Garissa has two from the Dab refugee camp and Meru has now entered the list of the counties which have recorded COVID-19 in an area called Mboi. Now, uh, 22 discharges have been uh, recorded, uh, bringing the number to 336. So much has been mentioned, including the use of a face mask if you're alone in the car. And um, just to emphasize on the measures that the government has put in place are just to keep you and I safe. Other than that, we look at now the news in other areas where Madaraka market in Thika Kimbo County has temporarily been closed following two COVID-19 cases that were reported in the area this week. County Trade Executive Committee member Kigo Njega say that the closure will pave way for the fumigation and fencing of the market among other activities. He said the move was prompted after reports indicated that the patient were a driver and his conductor who transport food items from Tanzania and had interacted with the locals. Still in Kembo County, now a Kembo County a court has allowed police to detain three university students for 10 days on suspicion of electronic fraud. The students, Kevin Munga Aroko, Ian Aundo Kinanga and Jefferson B. Asiago were found in possession of over 1,000 assorted SIM cards, laptops and identity cards of unknown people at High Point Estate of Georgia, sub-county, Kiambu County. Now, Kambu Senior Resident Magistrate Grace Omotho granted their orders to Constable Mohamed Amin to detain the students at Mbodega Police Station until he completes his investigations. Amin had earlier made a miscellaneous application number 156 of 2020 to be allowed ample time to hold the suspects in police custody in line with the constitutional requirement that bars police from detaining suspects for 24 hours without arraigning them in court. Independent Election Boundaries Commission, IEBC, pulled down the 2017 general election report a day after publication. Uh, 
uh, following public uproar over numerous irregularities. In a statement, the commission said that a few typography errors occasioned by massive data were noted. Hence, the document had been recalled and will be re-uploaded re and shared in due course. The commission stated that the number of voters rose to, from 19 uh, to 19 million six hundred and. 11,423 in 2017 from 14,388,781 in 2013, of which 17.4% of them were aged between 18 to 25 years, a slight increase from 17% in 2013, and 47% of the registered voters were male, while 53 were female. Police have now orders to arrest those who do not wear face masks appropriately. The same instructions apply for those found floating curfew and partial lockdown. Uh, field officers have been ordered to daily file cases of the crimes to police headquarters. This follows a directive by the Ministry of Health on various measures to be followed to help curb the spread of coronavirus. Head of Police Operations Henry Bamao has now ordered the immediate arrest of those who fail to wear masks or have them on but do not cover the mouth and nose. Similarly, mount, mount roadblocks to ensure no movement of vehicles and persons after commencement of 7 p.m. curfew hours, except those exempted and listed as essential services providers. All vehicles and persons found violating the orders to be detained and charged with contravening curfew orders. After Kenya Revenue Authority, KRA made it mandatory for all exports traded within Kenya, Uganda and Rwanda to be cleared under the single custom territory SCAT regime and only trucks fitted with the ECTS allowed to transport goods. Cargo trucking companies say the move is hurting their business. Through the Association Electronic Cargo Trucking System Providers Association of Kenya, APAC, the companies say the taxman discontinued signing of ECTS certificates from around February 27 of 2020 without a formal communication. This has jeopardized the business where they have cumulative investments of 5 billion shillings employing employing more than 500 people they say now according to APAC failing to satisfy the companies has affected movement of cargo from Mombasa with hundreds of containers lying at container freight stations this comes with additional storage charges demurrage costs and a breach of contracts with transporters and customers the eight companies have been providing real-time cargo tracking services in 2014 helping carry and regional authorities to curb dumping and cargo diversion now internationally St. Peter's Basilica in the Vatican reopened to visitors on Monday after being closed for over two months under Italy's lockdown orders to prevent the spread of the coronavirus. A few of visitors queued up observing social distancing rules and were watched by police officers wearing face masks before having the temperatures taken to enter the church which has been closed since March 10th. Italy was the first country to go into a full lockdown over two months ago, bringing the economy to its knees. The official death toll from the virus now stands at around 32,000. The government started lifting restrictions on May 4th on a Sunday. Joggers, workers and cyclists were plentiful on the streets of Rome's historic center. Restaurants, bars, caves, shops and hairdressers, among other businesses, were all expected to reopen on Monday, with public masses also resuming. In the face of much opposition, including from Pope Francis churches in Rome were shattered at the beginning of the coronavirus emergency in early March. Meanwhile, Burundians will vote Wednesday in a tense general election despite a largely ignored outbreak of coronavirus, which is said to be the first major challenge for the new president, President Pierre Nkurunziza who has been in power since 2005, shocked observers by deciding to step aside five years after coronavirus. 
controversial that term run plunged his country into political and economic crisis while ethiopia decided to delay its elections this year due to the pandemic burundi has pushed forward with the vote at all cost with with heaving crowds of thousands attending political rallies with only buckets of water and soap available as a nod to the virus. Burundi has so far officially recorded 42, 000, 42 cases and one death from the virus, but doctors and the opposition accuse the government of hiding the true extent of the outbreak. A reminder, the number now in Kenya stands at eight, uh, 912 confirmed cases, where 25 cases have been confirmed this day. My name is Dereva Hillary. I'll be seeing you again next week on Monday. Until then, stay home, be safe.